Half the fun of going anywhere in Vermont is just getting there. Seems like they've outlawed four-lane highways, although I know they're around here. This is a story about a woman from my grandparents' generation and her museum. Electra Havemeyer Webb was born in 1888. She was born into a sugar fortune and married into a railroad fortune and put the money to good use, saving stuff hardly anybody would have bothered with. In 1947, she started piling the stuff into her Shelburne, Vermont museum. Like any good woman, she liked to garden. There are something like 17 different varieties of daylilies outside the circus building. Inside the circus building is stuff from the golden age of circuses and things people made, like this million-piece wooden set depicting a full-blown big top. Posters of guys doing the evil Knievel thing before they strapped engines on their bikes. And even some politically incorrect posters. This one is Uncle Sam beating up Spain over Cuba. Lining most of the hallway are the carved wooden animals from a carousel she bought from a railroad and amusement park near the Sockendaga Reservoir in New York. The Webb family ran a railroad through the western Adirondacks. We've been camping there a bunch of times. They had a great camp, and in the fashion of the day, they stocked it with some sizable specimens. A Vermont Central 10-wheeler. It's got a roof over its head and lots of company. There are two other steam engines in the sheds nearby here. And the Grand Isle private passenger car. This was the Gulfstream jet of the 19th century. The Holy Smokes item of the Shelburne collection, actually there are many, has to be the 1906 steamer Ticonderoga. 220 feet long and 900 tons, the last remaining walking beam side paddle wheel steamer anywhere. Back in the 50s, they dragged it two miles across land from Lake Champlain. Electra Webb, I love that first name, had the money and foresight. It's got its own grand staircase. Bedrooms, like the captain just stepped out to check on something. The museum gets high marks for letting you crawl through everywhere on this ship, right down to the bilge with all the machinery and the ancient old electrical boxes. And now you know what the inside of the boilers look like. Here's the car that Leonard DiCaprio and Kate Winslet made out in. How did it get here? I'll never know. This is the underside of the Ticonderoga and one of the side wheels. Remember, they dragged this thing two miles across land. There are gardens everywhere in every manner of building. Old churches, jails, farmhouses, general stores. And inside, endless stuff that Electra Webb collected like these woven coverlets. A contemporary of Electra is a woman by the name of Helen Bruce built dozens of small miniature dioramas depicting life in the old days. And did I mention quilts? This is a contemporary quilt by a woman named Velda Newman. She dyes her own cloth and stitches them all together. The colors are fantastic and the size is titanic. And then there's the 200-year-old stuff and of course someone checked out every last one on display. Most made without the benefit of sewing machines, just hand-stitched together. Days were longer back then. The buildings here look ancient and decrepit, but that's just the outer shell. They're all fully modern and air-conditioned to save the artifacts. Mrs. Webb was friends with A.C. Gilbert. Yeah, that A.C. Gilbert of the American Flyer Model Train Company. He built this setup for her at the museum, though it's been modernized somewhat. This is like a carnival hall of mirrors. The collection is machine-manufactured drinking glasses, the earliest ones, and each one is just a little different. She saved dime store Indians, weather vanes, and ship's figureheads. Meanwhile, at the general store, while I was checking out the old tinctures, extracts of tar, and bogus cancer cures, a fellow tourist nearby wondered at the variety and efficacy of all this stuff. I told her there's even more stuff now at the nutrition and drug stores. It costs ten times as much, and it doesn't work either. Here's the other holy smokes moment. Electra and her husband had a huge apartment on Park Avenue in Manhattan. When they departed, six rooms were dismantled and installed in this brand new memorial building at the museum. Furniture, rugs, family photos, and yes, the family art collection. Imagine your own Claude Monet hanging above the hearth. And oh yeah, there are four or five more right here in the dining room. 
along with other Impressionists. The Webbs kept Monet in business before he got discovered. Remember that big round building? It's a Shaker-style barn or meeting house built with the beefiest beams you've ever seen and filled with old carriages. Mrs. Webb had five kids, and she died here in the Champlain Valley in 1960. She could have lived anywhere, but she wrapped it up here. Closing time at the Shelburne Museum came quickly, and we had to skedaddle. Just down the road is Virgen's Vermont, and there are big waterfalls, and it was the scene of a kid's fishing derby. On the way home, we paused at the Dead Creek Wildlife Management Area. These flats and sometimes swampy farmlands in Vermont attract thousands of migrating birds. Last photo stop of the day, Sabbath Day Point on Lake George, at sunset, on the longest day of the year.